Well, it's a wonderful, crazy day here in America, but it's even crazier in a good way because we have someone very special under the spotlight today, Susan. You know who it's going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? It's going to be Dakota <laughs> Mosier. <laughs> I really like the radio. That's really good. That's really good. Like it, it's years like of practice. Years of practice. Like that. That's good. Greeting Signature Studio Spotlight Series. This is the Ball Guy in the Red Tie. John Butler, your favorite bald-headed red tie wearing show host with Susan Ebert and Dakota Mosier. See, we like to do a little flip flop. Little, oh, yeah. oh, what's he doing? What's, what camera yeah. are we looking to? I that's don't know. Good. That's, good. that's good. I'm not even looking at any cameras. Oh. Yeah. No. What's going on here? Oh. What do I do with my hands? Right, exactly. You know what's funny? It's like I was thinking that when we were gonna come in here, I was like, "What do you even do?" Yeah, just okay, like. Okay, I like, like that like shot it? the best. Look, it's just my face is this microphone. Your face. <laughs> it's in, look, I'm perfectly. <laughs> In the middle of it. Oh, this is great. Is it? Oh, there you go. Oh. Camera, camera, camera one. Two more cameras. Two more cameras. Oh. Well, uh, Susan, I'm excited today. Yes. Because there's definitely a strong sense of the spirit with this one. Yes. Uh, the force is strong, as they say. Yes. That's my favorite and, movie uh, series, too. I know. I'm, I'm pulling all the ingredients, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like a chef. Yeah, no evidence either, either on his arms man. or anything. Yeah. Oh. You know. Oh, I thought yeah. you were saying, like, get your arms off the table. No. Like, oh, <laughs> it feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so in my element. You're, you're relaxed. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, today we are here to put the spotlight on Mr. Dakota, which, first of all, that's a fascinating name, so I want to know all about that. And uh, we're also going to be talking about his real estate career. We're going to talk about how he came to the Signature family and all the other things that are going to open up out of these conversations. I'm with uh, it. You're pretty articulate, so <laughs> here we go. So we'll start off with the name. Where did Dakota come from? Is there a background Dakota, that? Dakota. Um, so basically, like, I'm related to a cowboy that's in the Cowboy Hall of Fame. I'm just kidding, but for <laughs> real, I, I no, for, really? for real, there is a cowboy named Red Moser that's in the Cowboy Hall of Fame. He's actually I'm a I'm a descendant, so that's kind of cool. But uh, no, my my parents wanted to name me Cody. So if you hear a lot of my sphere, a lot of people call me Cody. So that are like when I go to lead worship, they're like, "Hey, Cody Moser's here with us." So they wanted to name me Cody. My my mom was like, "That doesn't look professional on a desk." Oh. You know? And then she was watching a soap yeah. opera, and I guess there was this guy with like dark hair and blue eyes that was like ridiculously good looking. She's like, "My baby's gonna be ridiculously good looking," <laughs> as you can tell. She, she and, spoke uh, truth over me. Yeah, yeah and she was like Dakota. That's and his name was Dakota on the show, and she was like, "That's the name." And then she and then they snubbed it up for Dakota, and then my nickname Cody K O T Y. So very cool. Yeah, I so. love it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good name. Yeah. Well, uh, we are obviously here under the spotlight to put the light on you here because you've had a tremendous career and I didn't realize it's only been like six months. Yeah. He's new. Yeah. yeah. He's new to the game yeah. and he knows how to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because you know, when some people, they, they wander around the office, they look lost and scared, like a little puppy kind of thing. I he, remember he when he was doing that. <laughs> I was doing that for sure. <laughs> well, he, well, every time I see him, he's like, on the phone, he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll meet you at ten o'clock." All right. Yeah. Like, okay, wow, he was having breakfast with his wife. Yeah. <laughs> July twenty nineteen was it? August twenty nineteen when I came in just after, all, at like literally the day after my my little honeymoon. I came in and signed all my paperwork, and then Susan just never saw me again for six months because I was too scared. I was, I was scared. Yeah. I was scared. It's part scared. of the process. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into it. How did you get into real estate? Because I'm sure you didn't just wake up and you're like, I'm going to be a realtor. So No. Um, actually, I was in sales. Um, and so I was working for Quiet Cool, mm -hmm. awesome company right up the street, actually. Um, but I was working for them and I was doing inside sales. I was doing a, in line to do outside sales and, uh, and going around and I want to talk to people. Hey, you want to be a rep? You want to be a dealer? You want to be an installer for, for Quiet Cool? And uh, it was cool. I thought I was going to be there for forever. And um, as we started going through, I mean, I just kind of, I guess, started feeling like there's more to life than this, you know? And mm -hmm. you start seeing, like, the salary cap is coming and the sales job position that I wanted wasn't opening fast enough, you know? And, like, it's just like every every, every corporate job, you know, they promise, especially when you're in it from for, through, through the growth of the company, you know, it's like you get promised a lot and sometimes it just doesn't go that way as the company unfolds, no fault to anybody. It's just, that's the way the cards fall, you know? And uh, so I'm sitting there one day and my wife was following James Shelby's wife mm -hmm. and her Instagram, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so Alicia. she started seeing James Shelby and she was like, look at this guy. 
why can't you just be this guy? You know? And I was like, <laughs> we all nice when your wife says it to you. Yeah. 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 And I was like, I, sh I mean, yeah, he's pretty cool, man. Like he, he dresses nice. He's super snazzy. And she's like, I just don't see why you literally do the same exact thing, but you can't do what he's doing. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Like, why not? Let's figure this out. And I called my dad literally in the car because my dad had his real estate license back in the day. Now he runs, uh, he's, he's ran cart dealerships for as long as I can remember. But he goes back and forth sometimes. And uh, he told me the school and stuff to go to, like some online course you go take, and they'll give you your real estate license. And they'll train you on how the business works and everything else, which is a total sham because you don't deal with any of the stuff on the yeah, test yeah. Or, or that you go through school for. None of that even applies unless you're reading a contract. Yeah. yeah. And um, But, uh, yeah, so he sent me that, and I went through I went through that. I literally – I feel bad now that if this gets – if word gets out there. Um, I would go to work, and I'd be on the phone or doing whatever, and I'd be sitting at my desk answering uh, answering tech support calls and little calls and, and on the side doing my doing my, doing my school work and stuff right there. And so I got my license. Uh, came – I went over to Keller Williams, signed up with them because I was just like, oh, they promised training and stuff like that. And I was like, that's what's up. I went to there, didn't get any training. A week later, James Shelby and Christian Stone were doing like a role play thing, and it was open to everyone as they always post. So I came over here, and James and Christian were like, dude, just just come over. Like nobody cares about what brokerage you're with. Nobody cares about what you're with. It's about you. It's about the brand that you make, what it is that you build. It's about you. That's what they care about. And at least here, like Susan has the the best setup for, for, for agents. If you're trying to – if like – you take none of my money. I'm I'm surprised this place is even in existence right now. Like, like, do you even charge me to be here at all? No, I just, I just love people. But it's kind of nice, you know. And so and and so seeing that, it was like, all right. So I, I jumped over real fast. Um, that was an expensive mistake, by the way, to pay to sign up with Kelly Williams and everything, and then jump over. So if I could recommend to anybody. Make sure you're committing to the right brokerage right off the bat, especially when you're trying to start in a business and you ain't got no money in the first place. Yeah. Make sure that you're not making any that's expensive you, mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's so bad. But um, but yeah, because literally I did nothing with them. I signed with them. I changed, and it probably cost me almost 300, 400 bucks easy. Yeah. Oh. And so well, then you got lucky because yeah. it could be thousands. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it was it was it was a mess, man. And once you look at the splits and stuff like that, it just wasn't worth it. And to be on like their mentor program, like. I mean, I probably would have walked away with a 30% split by the, by the time it was done, yeah. you know? And yeah. here it's like, yes, I'm still on a team. You know, let's get that at least straight. I'm not a solo agent. Okay, I'm too much of a procrastinator, too much, <laughs> too lazy to be a self-starter, right? No, you're intelligent I, and you knew to fire yourself. Okay, so me as a <laughs> boss was a bad thing starting out, okay? I feel like one day I'll be able to be like, I know this business enough to do it. Maybe, but I really like working with, I'm with Andrew Lewis Holmes and... Andrew and Justin are you just have a awesome. fantastic team. Yeah, really they, it's one of those things. Like I came and I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll learn how to do it. I'll break off. I'll do my own thing. I'll boom, be an awesome agent. And all of a sudden, I work with them, and I'm like, dude, these guys are awesome. Yeah. Like I don't even want to. I'd rather try and negotiate a better split than go out on my own because they're just fun people to be around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's yeah. so that's cool. Well, and then you find out that real estate isn't easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, when you dive in, I don't think it's easy. I think it's a lot of work. Well, I mean, I think it's just, it's not fair because like YouTube, <laughs> they, they, they tell you it is, you know what I mean? They make it, they, they tell you a lot of stuff, man. Like, Hey, dude, you don't even got to call people. You don't even got to cold call. Do you hate door knocking? You ain't even got a door knock. You hate texting people. You ain't even got a text. You want money just to fall in your pocket. Just pay for my seminar, man. Just, just pay for my seminar. Do what I tell you to do and you'll be just fine. The hawks and sharks that are in this industry, oh, it, it, I mean, they prey, and that's why there's an 88% failure rate within yeah. the first two years of agents because they get in, they get fleeced by all these gurus and like, oh, buy my system, buy this, buy this product. Oh, you don't want to do this? Okay, well, you got to buy this then. And then pretty soon you're $30,000 in debt when you didn't have any money to begin with. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, whereas I think the way that this system set up is through uh, partnerships, relationships, and then you know training, mentorship. And it's just uh, the better way to go. Yeah. I, I see people come here and they just succeed. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. And especially when you get with a team like like our team, like we do, they pay for like the Tom Ferry coaching and stuff like that and get you the scripting and everything else. Because when I was by myself, I was looking into coaching and I'm like, 
man, I can't figure out how to make money, let alone pay for this coaching because right. coaching is expensive. It is what it is, you know, but you get plugged in with like a top tier team that's actually like a producer and like you get a lot of benefits for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I it's you really got to look at it as, oh, I have to instead of I have to give you 50 percent of my cut or whatever, I have to give you half of my money. If you just switch the paradigm and be like, I'm paying for training as I go right. rather than all up front and hopefully it works. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a total difference and it changes it changes the way you look at it. But I mean, uh, to me, that that just that rocked my world. But well, and it's I. It's, so let's talk about this past six months. Uh, you you got into it. You joined the team. You joined here at the brokerage. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to hang out with Miss Fun Susan Ebert over here. But then he disappeared. Mm. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know about so this part. I'm like, where's Dakota? So, yeah, so t <laughs> July 2019, I, I disappeared until basically a year later, uh -huh. almost exactly a year later, because I was trying to do real estate part-time and not full-time and not giving it the time it deserves, thinking that I can, like like I was saying, like all these YouTube people say, you can do it when you get off work and do that. And hey, I'll, I'll, I'll give it up to the people that make it happen, man, honestly. The ones that make it happen, that's cool, but it... The reality of it is like if you aren't committed full time, like it's just not going to work. And that yeah. that was the thing. I couldn't just I couldn't get the wheels rolling. Right. I couldn't I couldn't make it work. And um, and then once COVID hit, you know, quite cool. I where I was promised a job where I was promised a career for forever. We're going to retire out of here. You know, like that kind of situation. It felt like that that was gone. All of a sudden it was like, hey, unfortunately, we have to make the business move. And you've been here a long time and they, you know, it's, it's dull, it's dollars and cents at the end of the day. And sorry, bro, but you got to go. Yeah. And, uh, lucky for me, I got blessed enough that, uh, that stimulus came out, you know, yeah. I'm an unashamed stimulus baby right now. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people were upset about that when it went down and everybody's like, stimulus baby. <laughs> everybody's Ooh. like, what do you mean you're making that much money to stay home? Like all my tax dollars are going there and blah, blah, blah. Hey, yeah, unashamed, man. Like that was, I paid a lot of money into that unemployment for a long time. <laughs> and when it came back to me, I just want to set the record clear, though. I didn't sit around, okay? I literally talked. I probably sat around for a month or two, and then I turned and, and then I talked to. Uh, once I found out that I could technically, if as long as I don't show profit, I can work, you know. But the second I show profit, then I have to get off of it. Um, and that was my tax person that told me that. And uh, uh, but yeah, so I talked to you and uh sh i said hey what teams are hiring what's up like i need to get on a team i need to figure this out um got plugged in with i talked to jimmy mochi i talked to justin bringus i talked to everybody and uh and justin and andrew just clicked man and so when i started working with them dude i mean they had me start dialing right off the bat boom i saw him every day yeah i'm like look you're at work oh my god you're at work it was amazing every day every day it's so crazy <laughs> so from day one until you actually got an apple from the tree how long did that take you from when you started july the, so, so it took me 30 days the team and then got mm -hmm. a deal it yeah. took me it took me 30 days that's yeah. that's incredibly fast actually yes yeah. so yeah. it took yeah. but it was but you, you put in that work though to make that happen i put in mad work yeah. i was like i was the guy that was trying i was trying to make 100 calls a day you know what i mean i was like dude we got to do this and justin was like but if you make 100 calls a day to nobody you're wasting your time like let me help you and guide you a little bit and show you what's up you know and show you how to really start navigating this business and um it was good to have like that that crazy work ethic you know yeah. And, uh, and I still think it's good, and I'm trying to get it back right now because I got super lazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> trying to get that back and generate that back. But uh, we, we had listed Payette, um, and that house was amazing. Beautiful pool in the backyard, and uh, it ended up selling like 100000 over asking, and we all jumped in the pool with suits on and stuff. I Great pictures. That. Yeah, oh, so that it? was your first deal? That was No, no, no. That was their first deal, but I got my first deal out of a fallout from – from that house oh, okay so because obviously we get a lot of buyer leads and stuff from that and so i ended up picking up a client from that house and bounced them out to riverside and ended up finding them a house over in riverside wow. yep and so that was that was a really that was actually a really really cool 
experience. But yeah, yeah, that was my first one. Then right there, it was so three or four months on the unemployment, and then I got off it because I started making money. <laughs> and then uh, the in-laws needed the the in-laws needed to sell their place all of a sudden because now I'm making money. So boom, we listed their house, and then had another buddy who needed to list his house because now I'm the guy, you know. And it's like that momentum, you know, it starts picking up. Yeah, and, and that's what it seems like for the agents that have a hard time getting off the ground. But if you can get one or two deals and then get on top of that surfboard and on that wave and flow with that momentum, it just starts to mm. really start to come in. So yeah. you're a living testament to that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I had some good ones. I even had a deal with you for a second. Yeah. Yeah. I gave you grace, man. I was I trying, know, to, I was trying man. to keep it together. I know. I know. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> dude. Like, <laughs> it's like, dude, I want to be on your podcast. Don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gracious man, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. In a market where it felt like everything was a sure thing, it was. It was and, very weird and that and that was, listing that you had yeah. it yeah. still hasn't sold. Uh, it's, it like, yeah, it's it's, it's, fi- it's, it's been delayed. To. Yeah, it's been yeah. delayed, and now we're finally getting there. And so, yeah. but I mean, we were able. To, yeah, I was able to at least salvage that too. So it was cool. You know, we did that. Sold a piece of land. They sold the house. I know, but do you feel cool. like you're a real estate agent now? I I. I don't because Justin reminds me how much I'm not. <laughs> but um, he's good at that. Th- yeah. <laughs> like I've noticed for 12 years he tells me yeah. that. Like, if you, were, you, if, if you know what a real estate agent does, that's yes. what and, you know, I'm like, oh man, okay, so I'm not a real estate agent yet. You know what I mean? It's just like, like, like my buddy Matthew one time put it, you know, like I'm a steal. I say I'm a Steelers fan, and he stopped me in my tracks. He goes. Your favorite team is the Steelers. <laughs> Can you name the entire starting line to the Steelers? And I said, no. He said, you are not a fan. That's that. <laughs> it on you. Yeah, and I was, he goes, that's your favorite team. Yeah. You, you, you wear the colors. You're not a fan. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And so Justin's the same way. Are you putting two in escrow a month? No. Are you? Do you have at least 10 in your pipeline at all times? Okay, call me back when you're a real estate agent. <laughs> Drops it like it's hot. That's good. You know, you need that. You yeah. need those kind of challenges yeah. because, like, those, like, oh man, there's been times where I go home and I'm just like telling my wife, I don't know if I got this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I got this in me. And I've been yeah. doing this for 12 years and I still have those moments. Yeah. Man, this business, it's the me, up and down. 15, yeah. same thing. You, you go home, you're like. You know, there's those days where you just conquer the world. You slayed all the yeah. dragons. You conquered yeah. the mountain. You did yeah. all those things. Yeah. And then the oh. very next day, uh, I notice a, b- a performer will come over, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> 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 what did I do? And like you do, you feel the shoulders <laughs> quiver up like this, dude. Stomach just hurts. Like, oh, you know, you so got to make that call that you don't want to make. You know? oh, you're going God. to bed an hour oh. earlier every night, and you don't know why. It's just because you want to cry yourself to sleep. You know? It's like... <laughs> Why are you in the shower so long? <laughs> nothing, nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. And there you're, you're kind of trying to get your self talk on. You're yeah. like, I'm going to put it this. Listen to Zig Ziglar as you go to bed. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. So oh. it's, it's, it's rough, man. And like what I think, and, and the other hard thing is like not giving in to the excuses. Yeah. Like, oh man, like this year it was hard for me to be like, okay, well, you know, it is an election year and this is the biggest well. election ever and there is COVID and there is, you know, like, like there's a lot of there were a lot of good excuses this year. There were a lot, will be. man. There were, will yeah, be. and there was there was a lot of good ones to be able to be like, no, nah, you know, it's it's not me, it's this, it's not me, it's this, right? right? And yeah. then in the midst of that December, I got two escrows. So I'm like, okay, so one of my better months was in the midst of excuse month. Right. When everybody checks out, yeah. I put two in. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? And yep. it was like, dude, you can't, you just can't stop, man. You can't stop in this business. It's crazy. You have to literally. Even in those nights when you're sobbing in the shower, you gotta wake up and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put on your brave face. That's it. Uh-huh. Go That's back it. out. It's That's why it. we wear fake eyelashes. I, I know. <laughs> you can still see them. They're good in the morning. <laughs> Always looking good. <laughs> well, um, so that's been an interesting journey for the past couple months. So I think mm-hmm. you're off to a good start here. You're on a great team at a great brokerage. So let's shift gears onto more of a personal level. Um, sounds like you're kind of an instrumental guy. Right, um, like, like playing with some banjos or something like that. Uh, oh, that kind of <laughs> instrumental. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my, it was a monumental. I don't know. It's one of those words. One of, one of those. One of those. But yes. Um, yeah. I uh, I love playing guitar. Love playing guitar. Still not that good at it, but I love playing guitar. Um, I play guitar, bass. I dabble in keys and uh, and I sing. 
and um, not good, but it, but I sing. I could I could we could have some great campfire nights or bonfire nights and stuff. But uh, yeah, no, he can sing, <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like the song. <laughs> like it was a real amazing. Song. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, um, was it, what was the song that I was singing? It was you had two songs. You did what is? two. What is it? That this is amazing grace. See. <laughs> This is unfailing love. I'm not gonna go anymore. I'm gonna yeah. embarrass myself. If I yeah. keep going, but, but that's the clip we're gonna play over and over. Again. Yeah, I know, right? That's <laughs> yeah. Gosh. But uh, no, but like I was telling you earlier, I mean, I'm good at. I, I think I'm, I'm good at bringing energy, and yeah. so like when I got into leading worship and stuff, because um, I've led worship now for oh gosh, like nine years, going on nine years. Um, but yeah, so leading worship is is that's just man that's my passion that's what yeah. i'm called to you know it's like good or not man like that's that's what i'll do you know and uh i like what susan said you got just got to make a joyful noise that's, that's <laughs> it <laughs> joyful that's noise? me yeah. doing yeah. worship yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. You know how to do it yeah. <laughs> so y god designed you for a very special purpose and gift to, uh, and gifted you to do this yeah yeah, yeah. and and y yeah and my buddy my buddy shane always uh kind of picks me up and, and has to remind me of that because like I get so caught up in mm -hmm. the bills and everything else, you know, and it's and trying to make the money and trying to do this. And as as much as it's good and we need to do it because then we can support the kingdom and we can help build and we can help do these things and we can uh, we can send missionaries places and we can start churches and we can do these things. You know, as much as that is a call in itself, right. uh, there's just this part of me that is like, oh, dude, I'm a worship leader, man. That's what I do. You know, like that's that that's that's my life. You know, at the at the end of the day, that's what I'm gonna do. Be doing for eternity in heaven, right? Yeah, cool. that's what we're all gonna be doing. Yay. And so it's like it's nice that I get a chance to bring, to bring that 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 spirit that spirit man here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And live that out a little bit. You know, and so I love it. I got. Um, did you know this from a young age? My dad did. My dad knew that because I didn't really know much about it. I thought I just liked to sing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just liked, I, like, I, I remember being a little kid and singing uh, Matchbox 20 songs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And How old are you? Well, I'm 29. Okay. It's going to be 30 in April. He's mm -hmm. just a baby. A little boy. Yeah. I, I, but I'm talking like seven. Like, I'm, I'm seven, and my dad used to take us to the vineyard, which was, like, big for worship and mm -hmm. stuff like that back in the day, back in, like, the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, I think they're still big, to be honest with you. Uh, but anyway, he used to take us out there, and then we would, and then we listen to the albums coming home, and I would sing all the songs and stuff like that, you know. And and so, so your little heart just automatically. Yeah, yeah I just took to it, you know. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay, this is cool. And like, even once all the craziness of my teen years was over, and I got back to it, it was like, whoa, like there's a piece here. There's a this this, this is a piece of me that that has been gone for so long, you know. Mm. And it was like, wow, and I I. I it's really cool because I, I feel like I got to, it, I, like I got to live two lives. Like I, I went through crazy stuff when, uh, when I was a kid. Like it was just like, like Breaking Bad. Like my mom's selling drugs and like crazy stuff. And uh, she's she's great. Though. She's still my best <laughs> friend. She's my number one fan. Okay, I love my mom to <laughs> death. I love my mom. But it's like we went through this crazy period of life, and it was it was nuts. Like. Mm -hmm. people kick coming kicking in the door with GA wow. stuff like oh it was it was crazy and uh and we went all through that and then my response to that as a teenager was to get into drugs and get into doing those things you, so you know had a prodigal son moment yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah when I was like when I was like 20 I was just telling Garrett the story today because he was like when did you start playing when I was 20 I was like coming off of some coming off of a, gnar a gnarly one and I was just like I wanted to I don't know if it's weird to say this on this, but, like, I wanted to die. Yeah. Like, I wanted, like, suicide was a thought. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was a major thought. I wanted to die. I was done. And I felt like, I felt like God had told me that night, hey, if you're done with your life, let me have it. Right? Ooh. And I was like. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. And I was like, what would you do with it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I was like, what would you do with it? And I literally, like, I felt like. God gave me a vision that night and yeah. showed me I, me playing a guitar in a stadium full of people and it was and it, and I just had it like burned in my mind of like this is who you are you know what I mean like this is the person that you are and I was like that's kind of crazy out there you know what I mean but and I'm just like whatever I have a big imagination but then I was going to work the next day I was working at Easy Lube over here uh off of Marietta hot springs and uh 
I go and I go into work and my buddy at the time, Brandon, so I'm cr- it's just a crazy story, dude. No, it brings tears in my eyes. But uh, I go, um, I go and I'm standing there at work and he's like, what you thinking about? And I was like, I don't know, man. I've just had this crazy feeling of like, I want to learn how to play guitar like really bad. So you hadn't played a guitar at this point? No, I had never. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like, I really want to know how to play guitar. Like, I really think that'd be cool. And uh, he's like, dude, you want to learn how to play guitar? And I was like, yes. Like, he's going to teach me, you know? I was like, yeah, yeah for <laughs> real. And he goes, I'll sell you one right now for $20. <laughs> and I was like, all right, done. You know what I mean? Like, let's, that, that's good enough. Like, let's go. And I followed him to his house. And I remember he brought this little Fender Stratocaster out, like, that you can buy from, like, like one of the, the Squire Strats that you can buy for super cheap off eBay for 20 bucks, you know? And I was like, it's perfect. It's amazing. This is exactly what I want. And did that i went down to lake elsinore over there on the on the back side of lake elsinore because uh, i was living off of grand avenue and i uh and i got a uh, uh amp and a tuner and like w- w- chords and stuff for it and everything and i was like dude this is it i probably spent like 35 dollars all together you know <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing and i went home and i plugged everything in and i went <laughs> and I was like, this is not good. You know, and I not that vision that you had the night no, before. No, it huh? was nothing yeah. like that, you know? And I was like, oh, this is not good. And then, but I just, I, I YouTubed it, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I YouTube, and I just started watching YouTube videos. And I replaced TV with YouTube, and I replaced video games with playing guitar. And, like, dude, I remember, because I wasn't going to church at the time there, mm-hmm. right? So, like, I was literally... Gosh, and it's like one of those things that I don't know if I can like say all this stuff, but Go for like it, we're literally sitting there in it. Like we lived, it was me, my mom, and my brother in this little tiny apartment, um, in this little two bedroom apartment. My brother slept in the living room, and then I had the I had the master, and my mom had the other room, and uh, and me, my brother Connor, and my buddy Dale. We would all just we would sit there and we would smoke bowls and I w- <laughs> and we would rotate on Xbox and then when it wasn't my turn I would play I would play guitar and I'd practice guitar and then it would go around and like and and that's what we would do and for like s- four months all we did was just sat there and just that was what we did because at the time I wasn't I was having seizures and stuff like that which by the way I got diagnosed with. Uh, epilepsy at like 20 yeah and so uh, all of a sudden started having seizures i i had started working with my dad at the car dealership worked for like 10 days sold eight cars i was like this is my job forever i'm gonna (laughs) kill this you know and then bam all of a sudden woke up and there's woke up to go to work in the morning fell out of the shower there's paramedics all around me and stuff they were like hey you just had a seizure we need to take you in the ambulance to the hospital went through that whole thing did that start after your vision or before after Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Ooh, right. Yeah. So mm. it was kind of weird. So spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So like I get in track and then mm-hmm. bam, this thing happens yeah. and it was yeah. like, whoa, what was that? Um, so anyway, uh, but yeah. So, but I had kind of learned how to play guitar and stuff at that point. Once that all happened, I was got really self destructive again, right? And <laughs> drinking and stuff more. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I was literally out of work. My I lost my job at the car dealership. I lost my driver's license. I lost like everything, you know, I'm like, whoa, what the heck? I'm a 20 year old, nobody, you know what I mean? Like just sitting here, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drain on society right now. What am I going to do? And, uh, dude, I went into a way downward spiral, you know, but I kept playing guitar. You know, I kept, I kept doing it and I kept sticking to that. And, but then I started smoking, smoking a lot of pot and drinking a lot and doing that, you know, because I just I didn't know what else to do with my time. And that was all it was. And the doctors wouldn't tell me what was going on. They were just like, you have epilepsy, take these pills, bye bye. And that's it. You know, they do MRIs, they do CAT scans, they do all these different things and nothing comes back. Like nothing comes back. And they're like, you don't have any tumors, you don't have nothing, you just, there it is. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like this weird thing of, Okay, well now let's. I went to go apply for a job over at Submarina, right? And the guy's like, "Dude, you qualify on like every single level. You have food handlers experience because I had two years of delivering pizzas and working that and like doing all this stuff." And I'm like, "Dude, yes, this is great." And I go, "Yeah, last thing, I uh, you know I have this thing, this, this epilepsy thing." And he's like, "Man, um, well, I, like I can't hire you if that's the case because like if you have a seizure and you fall and you have a knife in your hand, like." Oh, yeah. Like that ruins our insurance, and I was like, "Oh man, 
you know, like, just what a bummer. Like, totally shut down, you know. Like, so now I'm feeling even worse. You know what I mean? Can't like, get a job at some Whoa, dude, I can't even make a sandwich <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? Like, that was, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't drive. I can't make yeah. a sandwich. I can't do nothing. Like, I, I am literally, like, Kicking you down. Oh, my gosh, dude, that was the worst feeling in the world. And, like, gosh, like, w- you know, and where do you go from there? And that's all I was thinking was, like, what do I do? And I just... Dude, I would go home and like literally we lived right up against the Ortega Mountains and like I had to start seeing a therapist because um, I, I, I we, we were like I, my mom and my dad on my dad. Honestly, my dad was like paying for it. Cause I think my dad was scared and like I don't think he'll ever say it, but I think he was a bit worried, you know, because it was like, dude, like life is kicking you in the nuts right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like bad. And so like I would go and I would just. I remember I just had to get out of this little apartment that felt like a cave. Like, our apartment was, like, no bigger than this and, like, maybe half a Christian. What is that? Yeah. Christian there uh-huh. office right there. It was, like, maybe that. That's it. Like, 600 square feet. Wow. You know, it was, it was tiny. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, I, and it just felt like a cave. It was dark. It was depressing after a while, you know. It went from this place of inspiration of starting this adventure of playing guitar into this thing that's just, like, oh, I'm just here. I'm just waiting to die you know what i mean and it was it was it was a crazy moment and i remember i would go out and um i would go climb the mountains and go hiking up the trails and behind my house and stuff like just to get out of the house and uh man and then i went over to uh i was at a party and i got invited to go to church by somebody and i was like super drunk at the time and i was like no like this is crazy i'm not going to church you know and then they wouldn't they wouldn't let up on it and i was like okay so I went to church, um, and I went the first time, and, like, I went to the Way Family Church, which is a great church. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's over here in uh, Marietta off of, t- uh, right above in Taza off of, where's that, Sky Canyon right there. And uh, wonderful church, wonderful church. Um, but it, for me, going in there, it was weird because they're very, like, Pentecostal, like, yo, Holy Spirit's moving <laughs> in this place. <laughs> I'm walking in, I'm that like, yeah. what I'm are they doing? Fall down left and right, and all this stuff happening, and people <laughs> praying in tongues, and all this stuff. And I'm like, what is this nut house you guys have all brought me to? Like, is mm-hmm. this where, what is this? What is going on? You right. know, and like, um, somebody came out to me and asked to pray for me twice, and I said, nope, I'm good. We're not, Ugh. I'm not going up there and getting prayed over. This is not happening. And then finally, they asked me a third time. And I'm the kind of person that's like, I'll go with something just so you'll leave me alone, <laughs> you know? And, I, and they went up there and they prayed over me and they're like, you feel better? I was like, yeah, sure I do. You know what I mean? And I walked <laughs> out and I was like, dude, oh, never again. But they, they just wouldn't let me stop going to church, you know? Like the, the people from the church kept trying to pick me up, you know? And like, hey, get plugged in. You need to get plugged in. You need to get plugged in. I was like, dude, and and uh, like my buddy Shane uh, was just a huge influence in in my in my faith because like he just he was just a connector for me. He was like, dude, what do you do? Do you play guitar? And I'm like, yeah, I play a little bit of guitar. He's like, fine, then you're gonna hang out. He's like, let me introduce you to all these guys in the band, you know. And I I meet all the guys in the band, you know. And like at the time, I was like you guys are like phenomenal musicians, you know what I mean? Like this is like, I don't feel like good standing here, you know? Like it's almost like being a baby agent and you walk in uh-huh. and you're like, whoa, like these guys are making 300 They know what they're yeah. doing. These yeah. guys actually know what's up. You know what yeah. I mean? And then you get here and you're like, no, you don't. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 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 but it was just, no, I'm just playing. You're, you're a very smart man. <laughs> Oh, that was geared at me. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know to be offended. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> see, I'm not that bright. <laughs> I'll just play, but um, but it was kind of that feeling of like, oh man, like you guys are like real musicians, you know, and yeah, and they told me, hey, you need, to, you should come to the first practice, you know, like you should come to the not, like you should just come to the practice and hang out. And uh, so I went, and I like I brought my guitar and stuff. You know, I felt like eight years old at school. You know, like I didn't want to <laughs> open up my my guitar case. I was like, no, like you guys have like money invested in your stuff. Like I have this twenty dollar guitar in a in a box, basically right now. Like, no way. This ain't. I did, like I feel so out of place. And uh, but they just you know, church has a way of welcoming you in. Sure. You know, and the body has a way of welcoming you in, and making you feel like 
it doesn't matter. Like you belong and we will teach you anything that you need to know and you belong here. And that was the best thing that I loved about going to the way it was that was they had a very, very good culture of like, you belong here. And that it was awesome. And um, so I started playing with them and jamming with the people that were there and stuff like that. And they started teaching me little things here and there. And then they had me start playing rhythm guitar and stuff. And and just kept playing and kept playing and kept playing and kept practicing. And then I was like on fire because I'm like, now I'm in a band. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Do you remember your whoa. first moment actually playing in front of the congregation or the? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I couldn't stop jumping up and down because I was like, I, I better show a lot of energy if I <laughs> suck this bad. You know what I mean? Like, I better like do that. And like my pastor even was like, you got to kind of tone down, man. You know, like you got to you gotta bring it down, man. And I was like, all right. And I still didn't. And it was it was it was bad. <laughs> And uh, my energy level is still, like, high when I get up there. But it's just because of one of those things. I guess it was just, you know, it, y you have this moment where you're so low and God shows you something so great. And you take one step into walking in that light. And you just can't, it overwhelms you. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't, you can't go back from there. You know, you're just like. I know for you guys, it's stage presence. For me, it's, this just saved my life. You know what I mean? What and a that's testimony. Like, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. And it, it's just, man. And, like, and, and, that's, and that was just kind of like the reputation I got known for was I had a lot of energy and I had a lot of these things. And I had this honest, genuine heart of, like, dude, I love this. You know what I mean? Like, I love <laughs> worship. I love leading worship. Like, I want to grow in this because, like, it, it just because of that, like, dude, wor Jesus and 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 worship, it it saved my life, dude. You know, That's and beautiful, and dude, like that, and yeah. So I love it. It's a part of me, and it's a part of who I am and stuff. And I love testimonies yeah. like this. I know, I know, right? So I don't know if I'm like jumping on. No, no that was uh -uh. a beautiful okay. statement no, right uh -uh. there, man. Good. That was no. pure and uh, from the heart because. Good. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what's beautiful about the show that we do is that we put the spotlight up on people, and it's not to glorify their ego or how successful they are. W what we're interested in is the backstory. How did you get to this point? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's nice when someone can share directly from the heart and soul um, and, and just have pure joy about it, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm just sitting here watching. Like, yeah. you, you, every time he smiles, his eyes I know. Quit. Yeah. I know. He's happy. I know. He's happy. Just joy. Happy yeah. Pure yeah. joy. I know. It makes me really smile. I know. I know. All right. Well, I know Susan's got some uh, questions for you, so we'll start the Susan segment here. <laughs> My turn. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, so when did you get these tattoos? Um, I got these tattoos when I, once I had actually started going to church and stuff like that, and I was like, oh, man, like, I thought I wanted something cool because I was in the band and stuff <laughs> like that. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I justified it with a <laughs> with a Bible verse and stuff like that. I think everybody does, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah, it's just yeah. kind of like the trendy thing to do, and yeah. so you get it, and you're like, I don't regret them. You know no, what I no, mean? I don't regret look, them. It and says I'll, Alpha and Omega. Yeah, it's and awesome. a lot of people are like, like I'm known for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The crazy story is like my wife uh, wrote a book when she was, before we were together, she wrote a letter in a book and it was describing her future husband and her I talking wanted to you her. to tell this yeah. story <laughs> he has the best story but first you have to say how you met your wife okay so um so i met my wife like four times um <laughs> is that good you had to meet four yeah times. It, that was exactly it i met her at um i met her at some small groups and stuff like that and uh and I met her once and she and they had brought up my seizures and she was like, oh, my brother has seizures. And we talked and stuff like that for a second. I was like, yeah, I prayed for you. And that was it. And I kind of like left it, you know, like obviously she was like super cute girl, you know. But at the time, like like I was saying, I was so focused on like the music thing. And like I was like, this is my call in life, man. Like this, is it. you know, like no distractions, no nothing. You know, I was like blinders. Um, but um, yeah, I met her and I was I, thought she was totally cute but i didn't really like remember her. and like the next time i seen her i saw her at church and she was like 
oh hey she comes up and she could go we're all standing there me and my buddies and she comes up she's like hi gives everybody a hug skips me she goes to the next yeah. person like, oh, okay okay like whatever no big deal you know and not awkward yeah not nothing at all you know what i mean and like uh little did i know she was she was in a relationship at the time she didn't want to hug me because she liked me and she was in a relationship she felt bad uh-huh. um but uh anyway um she ended up and then after that it was so it was three times because after that i was getting ready to go lead worship and uh because i had just started at my buddy at center points um satellite campus in french valley Mm -hmm. and uh, i was the and i got i was the worship leader there my buddy justin was the pastor and um so i was getting ready to go to work to go lead worship one morning and i had a seizure right and i fell off the thing i dislocated my shoulder i bit through my tongue yeah i couldn't talk i was talking like this like the whole day and stuff and it just like my tongue was swollen up my mouth the whole inside of my mouth all chewed up couldn't lift my arm up or nothing like that and so i didn't even end up going to church that day i called the pastor i was like we got to figure something out you know it wasn't even me my roommate david called and was like we got to figure something out like i'm taking him to go to go see tony giordano because i don't know if you guys know tony he's a real estate agent really good one um trying to get him here tony but uh (laughs) 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 but uh he uh he's a fire he you know he's an ex-firefighter and stuff like that and so like they took me there and he came over checked me the whole nine with the flashlight all that kind of stuff and told me i need to get back on my medications and stuff and um and i guess monica came up behind me and she prayed for me when everybody was praying for me and uh and then we went to we went to lunch um right afterwards and like I, again i couldn't even talk or nothing and like when i have <laughs> when i have seizures like my mood swings are terrible like i go straight to mad depressive like crazy mad right and like we were standing outside and she was standing there like oh my gosh because i was like looking like i either wanted to fight somebody or just like just be a jerk for no reason you know she was like didn't even want to talk to me and i was sitting there trying to like crack jokes like all wounded you know like Oh yeah, look at this, da, 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 and like trying to start a conversation with her, and um, and so she was trying to like avoid me the whole day because I had a weird attitude. But then the next time I saw her, we were at small group, and um, she was like, "How you doing?" You know, we started talking, and uh, I don't know, man, it was just it was legit, and I uh, I was trying to act like I was too cool to hang out with her. You oh know? my and, like, god, I was <laughs> the boy in the band. <laughs> and uh, but at the end, uh, she we had talked about. Uh, how I need to cut caffeine out and stuff like that because of epilepsy and stuff. And I was like, hey, I can't ask you to coffee because obviously we talked about that, but you want to like go get some juice or something. <laughs> and, <Aww. laughs> and so, and she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down. And so, Aww. yeah, we ended up going to Intaza and hanging out and uh, she ditched her uh, her women's class to come hang out with me. She was, she was like, I'll meet up with you for an hour before this, like the women's group. And then yeah. that that's that, you know. I was like, all right. We got there, and it was like an hour and a half in. I was like, yeah, you, you need to go. And she's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, so, anyway. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> what we do. We needed an out just in case we yep, needed it. And, yeah. so, and like at that moment, exactly that. You know, <laughs> like I knew it was an out. And then exactly at that moment, I was like, oh, no, you're in this. You're in this. And yeah. I was like, you want to go grab dinner? And she was like, yeah. And so we went over to uh, BJ's in Temecula and had dinner and stuff and hung out. And we just totally hit it off. And uh so what was this book about oh wait 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 okay how did you ask her to marry you okay so um and then i asked her to marry me oh i sang a song in my backyard yeah oh oh you saw that (laughs) did you (laughs) (laughs) so i sang a song in my backyard i had uh, my keyboard player at the time come over and play and and, uh and (laughs) And I, and I like wedding singer status yeah. oh yeah kind of kind of and then and then i play guitar and like sing and then i proposed to her and like i had everybody hanging out around the corner and stuff and her whole, and like all of our friends and stuff came running out there's like 50 60 people in the backyard Jeez. this was pre this pre covid you yeah. know what yeah. i mean when yeah. social distancing wasn't yeah. a thing and um and then so everybody comes out as like a big surprise thing and then we had food and lunch and all that kind of stuff and then we got baptized there that day because uh, my pastor came too, and so we got baptized together. Uh, wow, walking that's into a big day for life. you, man. Oh, it was great, man. Yeah. It was great, and yeah. uh, and so we did that, and then we snuck off to go get married, mm-hmm. and because uh, my the guy who owns Quiet Cool, Dana Stevenson, uh, he's actually a registered minister, and he's a good friend of mine. I've known him since I've known him and his whole family since I was a little kid, 
And uh, so he, so his daughter Tara was like, "Go up to my dad's house and get married. You know, like just, just get it done. So that way you guys don't gotta worry about living in sand, nothing like that. You know." So I'm sure like, you were eager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, and so and plus, uh, yeah, but yeah, eager, definitely <laughs> eager, definitely <laughs> eager. Uh, but we'll, we'll just leave it at that. But yeah. So so anyway, uh, so we go up there and we got married and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, I actually like that wedding better than than our big blown out wedding. Cause it was just us. My mom flew out from Missouri and stuff for the night uh, or for the day, like literally just for the day to be there. And like, it was just family tight, short. And, um, and so she gave me a book. Now we're she to the book. She gave me a book and there's a picture of me reading the book on, on her Instagram, I think. And in the book, there's a letter that she wrote to her husband. Right. And this was like, she had been writing these th- these letters for years. Right. Of like, one day I'm going to get to hold you and all these kind of things. And, uh, you know, I can, I can see you now, you know, you have like dirty blonde hair and you got you and you know, you're tall, you're at least six foot, you know, like you're over six feet tall, six, three. And, uh, and just like little details. And she's like, she's like, I can't get over. There's, there's like some oil marks or something. Like you work on cars or something on your arms, like right here on your forearms. No way. Dude, dead on, man. Dead and you, you, and on. So she wrote this before meeting she you. Wrote th- she never even knew me, guys. And then you had those tattoos before you yes, met her. I had these tattoos. And she was writing uh, letters when I was to 21. her future husband. Gotta get I was 21. Yes. I met my wife when I was t- like 27, right? Wow. Yeah. So like, yeah. So she wrote it all down like crazy stuff. And I'm just like, like she, wow. she, it's, <laughs> it's something about, dude, it's something about, she read this book called write it down, make it happen, you know? And she literally was like, I'm going to write letters to my husband and I'm going to have my husband wow. and voila. You know? <laughs> Here I am. Here I am. Just like that. You know? And Jeez, <laughs> man. That's oh. an incredible story. I know, yeah. but can you imagine at your wedding, your wife giving you this book, and it's all the letters, and you read it, and you're the person that you were wow. hoping and wishing and praying for. And just oh, the fact just that the letters so beautiful. predate even knowing each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's not like yeah. it's reverse not like, engineering. Yeah, you know? no, no, no. It's not. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. It's about you. It's not like like I said because yeah. like I gotta yeah. make sure that's this close. Like yeah. she skipped me in line to give hugs that one day because she liked me. It yeah. wasn't like after that, you know, or around that right. time. It was like before, way before that. You know what yeah. I mean? It and was that's like, incredible. Did she write yeah. about her previous dating? Huh? Did she write about previous dating? I feel like you told me part of a story that where she had written a letter and she had gone out with someone or something. And oh, yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. Okay. So she had, and, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> am I still good? Cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, so she had written these letters, right? And she had, and it was so, it was before me. So she was like dating and stuff. And like she found a guy that fit the description, right? But she was like, "I will give you these when, like, when when we get married, like if we get married, you know." He was like, "No, just like let me see it, let me see it." And she was like, "No, I need to protect this." You know what I mean? Mm. Like, no, 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 this is. If she you, knew it wasn't him. Huh? Yeah, yes. it, it was weird. Yeah, and sure enough, they broke up. You know what I mean? Mm. Like right after that, and then she, she, and then she dated another guy, and it was like he didn't line up with any of it. And she literally was like, she she was like, I knew I wasn't supposed to be with him because he didn't line up with the vision that God had shown me, right? Isn't that insane? Whoa. Awesome. She's like, but I, I did this. it I because want it. I want every girl to do yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's all, yeah. I did it only because, like, she wanted to, like, she wanted to have. She just, she whatever. It was at the time, like that's what she. She knew it wasn't gonna last though. She yeah. knew it wasn't for real. And then all of a sudden, she met me, and she yeah. was like. Boom to the T, like to the T. Yeah. It's personality, everything, you yeah. know, and it was just like, man, it's, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Like, How did that make you feel when you read it and there were previous people in that book and it was you all along? Like, was that the best present? Yeah, because it made me feel like I belonged. Because I feel like uh, my whole life I was always that kid that wished I was part of the group, you oh. know what I mean? And so, like, to, fe- to feel like, Whoa, like I was somebody, some, I w- I'm somebody somebody prayed for. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that yeah. feeling of like, wow, that's yeah. insane. So, yeah, it's real love. So, I'm <laughs> so how long have you been married? I've been married for a year and a half now. Yep. And I love every minute of it. I, 
I, I know some people are like, oh, you know, it's nothing different. No, it's it's 100% different, 1,000% better. I love my life. I love my wife. Oh. Not saying that for Facebook either. <laughs> I'll say it here 100%. And like, like straight up, like I love my wife so much that like I'm like awkward. Like other girls walk around out here, like some of the other real estate agents, I like look down when I walk by, like 100%. I'm like, I do not want to dishonor my marriage in any way. I love my wife. Like oh. I love my wife. Yeah. Yeah. So That's how beautiful. many kids do you want to have? Four. Yay. Yes. yes. Be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> 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 Quadruple yourselves. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Do you want boys or girls? Yeah. Um, I think everybody prefers boys. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> all boys. Re- I'd be happy. Boys? I, I've always, I've always been, I had the thought of like, I, I would have be happy if the last one and the youngest one was a girl Okay. and the rest are all boys. I'd be do you have any that. names picked out? Yeah, so um, so Mo- Monica is uh, from a Mexican family, and they're big on juniors. And so if it's a boy, if the first one's a boy, it'll be juniors. It'll be Dakota Alexander Moshe Jr., oh. uh, a.k.a. Coda. And, uh-huh. then, and then f- if it's a girl, we really like Sunday Grace. Aww. And then we decided since there's a, there is a chance that she may have black hair and blue eyes, if she has black hair and blue eyes, we're calling her Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be born on a Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. Wednesday. Yeah. exactly. You know? oh, but we're awesome. both into like the punk rock scene and stuff like that. You and, are? and like the whole like gothic thing. And yeah, like Ed, like black is her favorite color and stuff. So like if we have a little girl and she's got black hair and blue eyes, she's Wednesday Adams all day. <laughs> 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 Wednesday Adams motion. Okay, favorite color? Uh, favorite color? Uh, blue. Definitely blue. Favorite car? My old 93 Toyota pickup truck. <laughs> Straight up. I like the way you went to the past instead of the future. Mm-hmm. Like Ferrari. I would buy it again. Really? I would buy it. I'm not a car guy. Yeah. I'm not a car guy. My my brother-in-law has uh, a 6, 6'4 six uh, Impala. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Um, I would buy that. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe. 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 <laughs> I'm like, I'm just not big on cars. Yeah. Okay, favorite sport? F- football, for sure. Yeah. Favorite team is Steelers. Favorite favorite team is Steelers. <laughs> not a fan. Uh, not yet, a fan yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. Working towards fanship. <laughs> Do you want to be a fan? I want to be a fan. <laughs> he so gave bad. you a goal, didn't he? Uh, he gave me like such a big now goal. I know you don't even know. Fan. As soon as he did that, like he even printed out for me the roster, and he was like, <laughs> "Get to work." <laughs> That's was, awesome. Oh, favorite kind of food. Uh, favorite kind of food. Jeez, oh, um, I like all food. Um, but I mean. I'm a sucker for Del Taco, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Their cheese is the best. Oh, dude, yeah. they're half pound bean and cheese burritos, yeah. and you get them bold with like the French fries in them. Yeah. <laughs> I, stuff, I, I, I like thought I was the only one that did no, that. And no, they have the no. best fries. Yes, too, they do. And they, and they <laughs> shove oh. them in there, and it's like whatever sauce is in there. And your and heart's like. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Like you move slower when you get home, and you're just like, oh, man. But, but like you get out, and you're so full, and like full to the brim, and you're like, how much money did I spend? $3. Okay, I'm going with that. Billy that. calls it. Uh, I just had a big bag of I hate myself. Oh, <laughs> dude. I love dude. that. <laughs> hey, Billy, I love it when you hate yourself, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes so good. <laughs> Tastes so good. <laughs> okay. Favorite thing to do with your wife? Favorite thing to do with my wife. Um, Besides that. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, hey. Yay. Yeah. It was him who did it this dude. time, not oh. me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Gosh, it's hard. Um, I, I like going pl- – uh, honestly, I like driving in the car with her. Um, we do wow. A that's that's a usually a spousal that's thing that like they don't like. Yep, that's <laughs> a good marriage right there. No, yep. like we like we like going places. You know what I mean? Like something about driving. Like we'll just drive. Like we'll even like go to stores because like I know I hate shopping. Gosh, I hate shopping so bad. And she <laughs> loves it. But like I love being in the car with her in between places. But I hate being <laughs> in the stores. You know what I mean? And uh, so, yeah, I like I like driving with her and stuff. Yeah, because we can't go to the gym together. We don't. We kind of clash on some things when it comes to working and stuff like that. Like <laughs> moving furniture. No, we don't do that together. You know what I mean? Like there's <laughs> no, no. It's no, good no. that you know. Yeah, yeah. There's some things where it's like, okay, I, we just can't do this together. <laughs> you know, like I love you in every way possible, but me and you don't click on this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years. And I say this in your career. How many babies will we have? 
five years, we're gonna have four. We're gonna have four babies for okay. sure. I told Monica, I'm like, you're pregnant for the next five years. We're knocking this out because I'm already 30, and we 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 need them all to be in the same vicinity so they leave at the same time too. <laughs> <laughs> That's very logical, actually. It really like is. Yeah. God, if I had a do-over, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, no, but uh, five years from now, uh, dude, I mean killing it real estate wise you know i mean I, I i would like to have be running my own team and stuff like that but it just it really depends i mean i i'm really in love with my team right now like it's it's hard man it's it's really it's really yeah. weird when you get on a good team because you're like my five-year goal is to be a top producing agent have my own team and, da, 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 and then all of a sudden you work with people that you just yeah. really like yep. and you're like man i we just gel you know yeah. what i mean and yeah. it just works dude like, and it's hard to find that kind of chemistry yeah. dynamic. And, and you don't have to have the textbook goal yeah of where you have to step out of the place that you're supposed to be yeah so many people make that mistake yeah and uh, and and so and part of me is just like man I, I don't know i think that's a really good thing so definitely if if anything being a major leadership role on the Andrew Lewis team for sure. There you, you go. know, like that, oh. that would be my main thing is making enough money to be totally happy. You know what I mean? Having a house with that I'm completely proud of. And, and like, I, I think having an awesome house is cool. I overlook cars, but yeah. having an awesome house is great. Um, one built for entertaining, do some worship nights and some band stuff there. Maybe a little bit of property. I've small seen a group. Couple, yep, mm -hmm. something like exactly small group. One that you can use for ministry, like a ministry house. Mm -hmm. So I see something like that. My future for sure in the next five years. Um, kids and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but one of the biggest things, um, trying to find a way to get my dad to work for me. Because oh. I miss it. I don't want him working at car dealerships all the time and stuff like that. Like I. Like they put I in long I hours. Yeah. Yeah. Hour yeah. Days, yeah. And like, I would love for my dad to be, me and my dad to be a little bit closer. You know, I had a lot of close moments with my mom growing up and like my dad, uh, and me and my dad weren't really as close. And now we are as I get into the professional realm. Yeah. And, uh, and he talked, he's talked about it a couple of times about getting back into real estate and stuff, you know, but he just makes, he makes killing money, you know? And so yeah. mm -hmm. honestly, there's a part of me that's like in five years, I want to build something big enough to influence him to come over. You know, nice. And I'm that's like, cool. that's cool. And kind of get my family plugged back in. Okay. If you could give one piece of advice to a buyer, what would that be? One piece of advice to a buyer. Um, start now. Start now. Don't put off until you think you want to buy something. Start now. Sit down. Have a conversation with me. Let's talk about where you are finances right now. Let's talk about what you want to do then let's talk about you know let's let's talk now about what you want to do then so that way we can meet that goal because that's that's the truth of it is the thing that the heartbreaking thing that i see all the time especially in this market you know is people stepping up to the plate when it's too late you know and they and they want to buy a house right now how much money you got i got nothing unfortunately this isn't 2004 you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> this is you know the w there's extremely low interest rates and there's a high bar to play at that level you know and yeah. it's talk to me now if you, if you're out there if you're looking to buy a house talk to a buyer's agent now get the ball rolling now so that way either later this year six months three months six months a year from now two years from now you at least are moving in the right direction because a penny a day doubled man a penny a day doubled changes the game so if we can start getting you to start tucking money away right now, then it's going to be life changing for you and your family later. You yeah. know, that's an awesome piece of advice. Right. It's that's probably great. one of the better answers that I've heard. Yeah. That question. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what's your piece of advice for a seller right now? For a seller right now? Call me. I'll get you hooked up with Andrew Lewis. <laughs> Houses are selling like crazy right now. Just, dude, let us put it in. Let, let us put a sign in your yard. I promise we'll get you. We'll get you 103 percent. Whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the list price. Um, no, I guess uh, for a seller, um, for sellers, I, I think that the best the best advice to give to a seller right now is just like take advantage of the buyer pool. You know, there's there's a lot of buyers out there right now. There's a lot of buyers. I had to have this conversation with my dad. My dad said, so when do you think, like, when do you think I should actually sell? Since this is what you do, you're my real estate agent, when do you think I should actually sell? I said, honestly, your price point, Fannie Mae talking about, they draw, I heard a line on Tom Ferry about Fannie Mae bringing interest rates back up a quarter percent towards the third quarter this year. 
I mean, that's going to level out a whole bunch of buyers. I, I would say list in Q2, no later than Q2 to be able to get your full money. Because, yeah, they're projecting home values are going to be up 10% over the next year. Totally understand that. Is waiting for that 10% worth missing out on these quick sell opportunities that we have right now? Where you can sell your house now faster with an agent than you can talking to Zillow and going through their budget experience of selling your house. Yep. Like that's, is it, it, it's a no-brainer, man. Yeah. Good answers. He's very smart. I know. I I, I kind of think he is a real estate agent. I just wish Even I could Justin do the same exact scripting on the phone. <laughs> 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 then I would actually have some money. <laughs> I, I think the easiest thing about phone calling is you have to remember you're just talking to another person. And we yeah. get into this job thing where, oh, wait, this is my job. Am I doing it right? And we forget we're just talking to another human, yeah. finding out if we can help them or not. Mm. You know? You're good at conversations. I don't, well, I don't worry about you at all, but there's pressure and it feels pressure when you're doing yeah. it. That's kind of my assessment of him is that um, you have such a, a bright spirit to you and, yeah. and you're very articulate and you're smart, witty, funny, and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, sir. Sound like someone familiar. Yeah. So maybe you should start your own show. Yeah. I think you start <laughs> talk to Billy. He'll get yeah. you set up, man. Me and my wife were talking about setting up some kind of podcast stuff because yeah. like nowadays everybody has to have – if you're in business, you have to have a podcast, video, yeah. a YouTube channel. Even that, if it's not know. a podcast, it's bringing your people in here and getting your testimonies of all the people that you've bought right. and sold mm, with that's good you know yeah you have good and energy for the your, camera and stuff yeah. like that so i think you'd actually do very very well with that yeah um, thank you for that and it's fun yeah. to watch yeah yeah no y and you can tell you like it oh I yeah, you're I having do. fun i, I can tell i, I love it yeah, I love yeah. It. I love <laughs> it. it's hard for me not to be like this so is the Cody show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you can't be. All right. So I've never done this before, but the, the time is running out. So um, I'm going to let you close us out for the spotlight show today. Okay. So here you go. Here's your opportunity. Okay. It, how do we how do we close out the show? You don't even know. <laughs> All right. Look into that camera. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's not as easy as it looks. No, it's it? not. Like all of a sudden, you're like, "What do right, I? What yeah, do you?" I'll, I'll, okay, okay. Here, give me, give me some I'll, I'll give you the run through. So I know what you I'll give you the run through in the. Because I don't want to be like, "A." Hey, okay. Thanks for coming Ready? by the spotlight show. Peace out. <laughs> We're done. You know, that's, like, that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. All right. So this is what I do. Ready? Okay. All right. And there we have it, folks. Uh, we have Dakota Mosier <laughs> and Susan Ebert and your favorite ball dater, Red, Red Tide Wearing Realtors. See, now you got me stumbling. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. See you in escrow. Bye bye. So that's, now, how he okay. that so that's how I close it out. Yeah. That, that's good. So uh -huh. there you go. Yep. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming and joining the ball guy with the red tie, Susan Ebert, and the tremendously good-looking <laughs> Cody Mosher. <laughs> you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time here on the Spotlight Show. Blow my kisses up. <laughs> 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 oh All right, man. I think it's in your future, dude. So uh, uh. talk to Billy. He gets you set up. <laughs> but uh, great show. Great show. All right. Yeah, fun. A lot of good times. Cool. I'm sure we go on a couple more hours, but uh, yeah. I think Billy's got got things to do. Well, if you guys <laughs> ever got time to kill, I'll do it again. It's fun. All yeah, right. If you guys are helping too. Hey, that's what we do here <laughs> at Signature Real Estate Group. We kill time. <laughs> All right, so I'll close it off for real now. Uh, that concludes this episode of the Signature Studio Spotlight Series with Susan Ebert, John Butler, the Balkan, Ray Ty, and Dakota or Cody Mosier saying, see you in escrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>